Hi, I'm Amy Cecil. I'm the Programs Director for the Data Visualization Society. I'm here with Josephine Drew, who is part of the Annual Survey Committee, and she's going to talk through the data from the 2021 State of the Industry Survey and show you how it compares to past year's data. This is part two of a three-part series explaining the survey data, and I will hand it over to Josephine. Welcome. If you are opening this video, you have probably already watched the first video on how to navigate the 2021 data. You might have noticed that I forgot to explain how the variable names work. I will do that in this video. So the point of this video is you have looked at the 2021 data, you have picked some topics that interest you, and now you want to know, how does it compare to past year's data? So the two questions this video will answer is, where can you get resources for that data that match this year's variable names? And if you are so inclined, how can you view those previous surveys? And then how do you examine whether those previous surveys asked your questions of interest exactly the same way? How did they, did they report the data? Or if not, how do you deal with those differences? So it's a quick refresher. If you go to the Data Visualization Society Challenges page, you will get a link to this year's challenge, which has a link to the survey data. In, in the future, if you're watching this after the challenge has ended, there's also a surveys page under the programs. So that will also give you a link to the data in the future. So once you open the survey data link for 2021, you will get to this Google Sheets, which as we saw has CSVs here for anybody who does not use Excel. If you do use Excel, you should download an Excel file. And the Excel file will have all of these tabs in it the data for 2021, and then all the data that we're going to look at now for the past years. The map on this README gives you the colors of the tabs for that data and the file names. So 2020 was the survey that was the most similar to 2021. They both had different pages of questions for people who do freelance work, people who work in organizations, people who do, it at, do data visual, visualize data as a hobby, and so forth. So it is published in the same two table format with the main table having the same setup of questions at the top, the question number, the variable name, and the data. And you can navigate it exactly the same way. It has multiple rows of columns for questions like which of the roles apply to you. You can always use the top left to go back to the readme. And then you can see there's the other table for 2020, which republishes the job titles the same way as last year as an independent uh, column. But it adds just one column that allows you to do something like analyze whether people who have analyst type roles have what kinds of titles, what kinds of job titles fit under certain kinds of roles, or designers, what kinds of roles do they have that involve data visualization? 2020 is also the one year that has a dictionary that is as detailed as this year's, which has the same setup. And specifically, when you scroll all the way to the right, the counts of how many people were potentially asked each question, and then how many actually answered it. The past three years data each have one table. And if you click on any of these links, you can, you can see those tables. Uh, again, back to README table 2018. All of the data tables from the past years preserve all of the privacy protection that was used in the first publication of the data. But it updates the variable names to match this year's so that it's easier to compare things. However, the variable names are sometimes not exactly the same for reasons that are shown in this five years survey table. And this five years table is your best resource if you want to compare this year's data with anything prior to 2020. You definitely want to look at this table. And this table, you'll notice I have it already open to the 2021 sequence. So assuming you looked at the 2021 data, you picked a couple topics that were interesting to you. And Amy and I said, maybe it would be, how much do you charge as a freelancer? So you notice that uh, question one was the one in 2021 that asked about freelance. If you look at this table, which I should have set up at the beginning, but if you look at this table and scroll right, you will see a column of question numbers and you can use the 2021 sequence to find the questions from the other years that ask the same. And what you learn here, first of all, is that the freelance 
data field is one that you can get in all five years. <clears throat> the second thing you learn is that it was not asked exactly the same in any year. So the color code used throughout this five years map has three parts. The light color shows that the color, the question was brand new that year. <clears throat> the middle color shows that it was asked the previous year and it was asked exactly the same. So if you have a row like job title here, you can see that was that question has never changed in any way across the five years, which is useful. And the dark color shows that there was some kind of change. And so for the freelance question here, you will then want to scroll right and see exactly what changed. You can read the question and then you can read the response options. And here you can see that's a lot of the difference. Also, the variable names are set up to communicate things about with underscores in two ways. If a variable name has a double underscore, that means that it was a free input. It just asked the respondent to write in whatever they wanted. If it has a single underscore, it means that it was a question that had multiple options, like the DV roles here. And the person could select more than one option, and therefore there's gonna be more than one data column for that question. So that's what the underscore is. Amy, what am I forgetting now? I can't remember what I haven't shown yet in this video. Have I shown people these tables? Probably, and if not, you can open them yourself. And oh, very importantly, if you have questions at any point, we would be super happy to hear them and answer them. You can message us in the DVS Slack. There's a DVS Challenges channel. You can DM me or Amy or anybody else on the survey committee who everybody on the survey committee is listed on the survey page. And I think that's it for answering these questions, unless people send questions. Yeah, I think that's it for part two, and we will see you for part oh, three. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry to talk over you. I just remember there is one more thing for if people want to view the surveys. I think some people might be nutty like I am, and they want to see exactly what the survey looks like. There are these views that are going to be linked in the main table. And it's going to be linked under the tall table with the headings. I might have it like set up here in the demo table already. And so why are those useful, Josephine? Why are they useful? Um, they give you the sense of how exactly the data was collected. Sometimes people will notice things like the length of a, it's it's seeing exactly how the data was collected. And it can make for better analysis. And I think one of the things that happens when you do a project like this, if you're doing it to build skills or portfolio, it's really nice to be able to talk through your process in a job interview, to sort of talk about the different things you, you considered, because it shows how you think. So I think that's where this is useful. If somebody is wanting to look at, at a question across several years, to be able to look and see what the people who answered that question saw when they ask that. It's also useful to note that we've used three different survey platforms for <laughs> the five years. Um, the past year, 2021 was done in SurveyMonkey, 2020 was Survey Legend, and then the two previous years were, or the three previous years were um, just a simple Google survey. Google Sheet, uh, yeah, uh, Google Forms, yeah, that is a yeah, very Google form. Yes, and then you can see exactly Oh, yes. And you know, Amy, that's a super good point. I think what happened in the first three years, Google Forms would not accept an answer if you didn't make it to the last page. Whereas Survey Legend and Survey Monkey both allowed us to collect incomplete answers where somebody might have answered 10 questions and then stopped taking the survey. And so that's that affects some of the counts in terms of how many people could have been asked a question and then sort of page by page drop off. Yep, that's a good other point about the difference between the five years of data. Yeah, thank you for, for loading that. We shall let people go and move on to part three. Okay, we will see you in part three. Thank you. Bye.